The TV dinner, the frozen meal in a box, pre-cooked, pre-portioned, and just waiting to be nuked and eaten. What we may see as the staple meal for a broke college student was originally the convenient meal of the future. Saving time and money for households all across America, the TV dinner was the way to have a home-cooked quality meal without any of the effort. How did the TV dinner come to be though, and who was the first company to start selling these futuristic delights? Let's find out. Three Minute Flix. Entertaining, educating, and enlightening. The most important part of a TV dinner is that it's frozen. This keeps the meal in a sanitary state while preserving most of the flavor and texture of when it was originally prepared. Or, well, at least some of it. In the 1920s, Americans were no stranger to frozen meats, but they were largely unpopular with the public. Freezing methods were slow and unrefined though, causing a massive loss of texture during the freezing and eventual thawing processes. However, when Clarence Birdseye commercialized a method for rapidly freezing fresh fish, the door had been opened. Thanks to Birdseye's flash freezing technology, fish and meats were able to retain their original quality and flavor after being frozen. By the 1930s, Birdseye had moved on to freezing other meal staples as well, like potatoes and vegetables. However fancy the technology was though, most Americans didn't own an icebox, which made for a pretty hefty roadblock for its potential popularity. This didn't stop other companies from getting into the game though, as American entrepreneur Jack Fisher would use the same methods to sell frozen meals to bars and taverns as a way to feed hungry patrons without the need for any kitchen staff at all. Eventually, in 1949, the company Frozen Dinners Inc., a subsidiary of Quaker, was born, and it began selling, well, frozen dinners to the city of Pittsburgh. Despite the small scale, the company would sell over 400,000 meals in the first year alone, and would slowly begin to distribute to other cities throughout the eastern US. The real frozen explosion wouldn't kick in until 1953 though, when Swanson & Sons, a widely known frozen poultry seller, was stuck with over 260 tons of leftover turkeys after a historically low Thanksgiving sale. To save themselves, Swanson placed the frozen turkeys in a line of refrigerated railway cars. However, the cars would only refrigerate while in motion, which would begin the cross-country back and forth of over 520,000 pounds of turkey traveling by train while the executives frantically figured out what to do next. Everything changed when a Swanson employee suggested a three-compartment aluminum tray filled with turkey, mashed potatoes, vegetables, and gravy, inspired by the works of companies from before, but targeting the public much more aggressively. The aluminum tray would double as a container for the meal as well as a vessel for the food to travel into an oven. The execs took the idea and ran, alongside an absolutely massive nationwide marketing campaign targeting tired housewives who wanted a break from cooking, a guaranteed dinner in 25 minutes for the low price of 98 cents. It seems that's just what the people were looking for. The Swanson TV dinner was a success, selling well over 10 million units in the first year. Not only did the TV dinner take off commercially, but it also fundamentally changed the American dinner time, with many more people enjoying their meal with the family in front of the TV rather than huddled around the dining room table. Three Minute Flix. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We create new videos weekly.